the sounds, the energy, the trials, the, trump the triumphs, and the struggles. I want you just to get a grasp of this. This is going to be your six-minute warm-up. Typically in our training sessions, we spend about five minutes of mental fortitude, and then we do an eight-minute warm-up. So what we're going to introduce you to an athletic kind of performance, but it's basically going to be an intellectual movement. Cue video. Oops. Cue video. Yes. 
sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You need a new buddy. It's going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how we did it start. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits and not point your fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. I firmly believe that any man to find this guy, the greatest fulfillment of all that he holds dear, is that moment when he has worked his heart out in good cause and lies exhausted on the field of battle, victorious. Never give in, never give in, never, never, never. In nothing, great or small, large or petty, never give in, except to convict him no longer, and to a Never yield to force, never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. Men will still say, this will never find you, Charlie. What are we doing live? That's the question. How great can you be? Instead of doing body coordination drills or calisthenics or team push ups, I wanted to stimulate your thinking with sights and sounds and struggle and triumph and victory and challenge. I hope that you find that video as interesting as I do, because that's life. When I talk about achieving competitive excellence, I want you to understand that sometimes you've got to get in there and you've got to tough it out. Life's winds are going to blow. As youngsters, you have to learn how to set your sails right now. And that's the beauty of being you. I want you to know that you are impact powerful. You're impactful. You're purposeful. You guys are amazing. It's important that you recognize your value and your power now so that you can then go out there and impact and change the world. When is the last time anyone called you a champion? When is the last time you woke up in the morning and you said, man, oh man, I can't wait to get started because I'm going to champion myself and others. That's what achieving competitive excellence is all about. I want to provide you with my definition of what a champion is. A champion is someone who gives rise to the voice of others. No doubt about that. It's okay to win that gold medal and you should work to win. You should do the work. You should play hard, but you should play fair. But ultimately, how will you impact the world? Because that's what we're here for. That's what achieving competitive excellence is. You may, in fact, be the decisive element in your school, your church, your home, or your community, or on your team. It's your personal approach that creates the climate, your daily mood that makes the weather. You possess tremendous power to make someone else's life miserable or joyous. You can choose to be the tool of torture or an instrument of inspiration. You can humiliate, humor, hurt, or heal. Young people, young people, Recognize your value, recognize your power, recognize the timing more than anything because it's your time and it's your turn. Does anybody know who this young lady is? This is a singing sensation. Her name is Jackie Ivanko. At the age of 10, she stepped into a national platform and she began to sing eloquently like a chorus of angels at the age of 10. The crowd was mesmerized. The judges' jaw dropped. They couldn't believe what was coming from her mouth. She had developed, nurtured, and cultivated her skill set. And let me tell you right now, she's 14 years old, and she has changed this world. There are others who are, she's inspired to do great things. 
I won't even tell you her net worth, but she gives thousands and thousands of dollars to different charities and organizations. She's now 14, doing things that you would not imagine. My man, Usain Bolt, you see it says, yowza. This young fella right here, Jamaican born, set the world record running a time in the 100 meter dash of 9.58 seconds. Now let me just share with you what that means for a human to do. That means he runs upwards of 10.44 meters per second, which means he can run from there to there before you can blink. At velocity, he's faster than 22 mile an hour. He can outrun our Pintos and some of our slower cars. He is inspiring the world. He's nurtured, cultivated, and, and created that gift that God has given him, and he's changing the world. He's unbelievable, but guess what? The extraordinary is now the ordinary. The impossible is now the possible. In fact, it's the everyday. This is Alan Eustace. Does anybody know who this is? See, my goal was to introduce you guys to some people that you don't know, because you already know what you know, but you don't know what you don't know. So check this out. This guy and his team of experts, they take a helium balloon made by superstars. They take him up to 136,000 feet into the stratosphere. He's wearing a suit. He's not in a vessel or a craft, and he's released from that, and he plummets to Earth at 822 miles an hour. Pulls a parachute and lands. The people on the ground said that it sounded like a sonic boom. That's because he broke the sound barrier without a craft or a vessel on him. My friends, let me share this with you again. The impossible is now the possible. He's a modern day Iron Man, and I don't mean the guy that swims, runs, and, and uh, bikes. I mean the Marvel comic character, Iron Man. He's jumping, out, he's, <laughs> he's jumping out of the air and he's plumbing to the earth and he lands safely. See, then the question to me then becomes is, what has God stirred up in you? Maybe you're supposed to be that engineer or that architect that helps a guy like this get that high up and comes back down. And by the way, he just did this uh, three months ago. During your lifetime, what will his legacy be? The real question is, what will your legacy be? He's changing the world. So what has your parent, your coach, your pastor, your teacher, your friend spoken to your life and said, you know what, I think you have a unique ability. Man, you can do this. You can do this. You can get it done. Muhammad Ali says, I didn't tussled with an alligator. That's right, tussled with an alligator. Wrestled with a whale. Handcuffed, lightning, throw thunder in jail. Well, could that be possible? Or has he learned how to sell himself on himself? What kind of an AM ritual do you have every morning so that you can show up and show out when you get where you're going? Have you ever heard of an AM ritual? What are your habits, your practices, and your rituals? Things that will make you 5% better so you can be a stronger witness. Have I, do I have your attention? You sure? Is the calm in the room because I'm stirring you up? What's that calm in the room? Are you just so focused? You've got a laser-like focus that you're, you're trying to wrap yourself around this? The young lady, when I came in, is it Caitlin? Caitlin says, she says, sir, are you going to preach the sermon tonight? I said, I don't know if I'm going to preach anything, but I'm going to share some truth. Can I, am I hitting you where you live? Do you want to be great? The question is, how great can you be? The answer is this, coach as great as I choose to be. So say that back to me, how great can you be? Come on now, you gotta sing that. How great can you be? Well, let's choose greatness. Vince Lombardi says this, and I certainly would agree with it. And by the way, Vince Lombardi was one of the finest football coaches ever. In fact, the Super Bowl trophy's named after him, it's the Lombardi Trophy. He says, and I quote, a man can be as great as he wants to be if he believes in himself and has the courage the determination, the dedication, the discipline, and the competitive drive. And if you're willing to sacrifice the little things in life, pay the price for the things that are worthwhile. It can be done. So you guys say this with me too, because I think that when we speak, we create. So say, it can be done. Can be done. You have to learn to say things with conviction. It can be done. Can be done. All right, all right. So when you wake up tomorrow morning, the first thing you do is you say, it can be done. Deal? Watch how your life begins to change. 
As we speak, we create. Yes? Part of the think, say, do principle. So, when I think about the greatest success formula ever created, it was created by a gentleman named Paul, the Apostle Paul. You guys familiar with him? Yes? Fantastic. The Apostle Paul says, you know what? I'm not going to go there yet because I don't think I've warmed you up enough. I don't think the blood's flowing yet. Let's, let's talk about a winning attitude first. Everything starts with a winning attitude. This is kind of foreign to you. It's like you're an athlete who's just barely stepped into one of our programs, like speed, track, and field. You're going, why are they doing those crazy drills? That makes no sense. How many repetitions do I have to do? I'm tired. I don't think I like it. Don't worry. You're going to fall in love with it within the next 22 minutes. You're going to embrace success because that's who you are. You're champions. No one's told you that. I'm telling you who you are because the world's telling you who you're not every single day. You guys are great. Wonderfully and masterfully made. There are over 7 billion people in the world, and there's no one like you that qualifies and validates your value within itself. Understand there is no success without risk of failure, no reward without hard work, no opportunity without criticism. you got to be thick-skinned in this world, and no true leadership without trust in God. Would you agree? It's okay to say no. Would you agree? Okay. So the Apostle Paul has the best success formula from, from way back when. And he says this. He says, do you know, in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27, he says, do you know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? What is he talking about? Life is competitive. It's competitive. You can't be in the cheap seats and be successful. It's time as believers to let our light shine. Whatever the arena that you're supposed to be on, whatever the platform, like Jackie Ivanko, Usain Bolt, or Alice, Alice Truths, we now have opportunities to have platforms to glorify what we believe in. This is your time, and it's your turn. You're willing to do the work. It's going to start with belief. The Apostle Paul goes on and says, run in such a way as to get the prize. So he's saying you've got to commit, and you have to have some focus. No hocus pocus, just focus. Now, I want you to understand, I understand Scripture, and the Apostle Paul was not talking about the wreath they put on the athlete's head back then or the gold medal and all that stuff. He was talking about the opportunity to preach, do other things. But I think that the Apostle Paul's message transcends the airways, transcends everything, academically, mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, the whole nine yards. That's why I bring it here. Then he goes on to say, everyone who enters the games goes into strict training. Man. That means you got to do it. You've got to get up and get the work done. My favorite part as a coach comes next. He says, therefore, I do not run like a uh, man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. So that means he's prepared and he's planned this thing out. What does your preparation and planning life look like? What is your level of commitment? I tell my student athletes a 30% commitment 100% of the time is still only a 30% commitment. What does your commitment look like? comes back to how great you want to be. Finally, the Apostle Paul says in 27, he says, no, I beat my body and make it my slave. Well, that's called discipline. When you put it all together, I think this is the greatest success formula that's ever been created. Ever been created. You can apply this to any business, to your home life, to anything else that you like to do. How are you guys doing so far? We're doing all right? So let's take a look at this, this whole message. He goes on to say, this is the full 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. I want to read it the way that it is in the NIV. Do you know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who enters the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beat in the air. No, I beat my body and make it my slave. So that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified from the prize. I think it's the most beautiful, majestic passage in Scripture. All right, you ready to talk about high performance? Yes, maybe? 
All right, I've kind of taken this down from 42 to 3, so I'm going to accelerate the process now just a little bit. The three Ps of high performance. We have to look at our performance barriers. What's a performance barrier? It's anything that gets in the way of you accomplishing what you should accomplish. It could be Facebook or Twitter. It can be texting. It can be TV. It doesn't have to be those things, but it could be. It could be someone that you're hanging around with. You know, remember this, that bad character, um, bad company corrupts good character. It's important that you hang out with the right folks, read the right books, see the right things. All those things are imperative. That's what I mean by performance barriers. Do you know what the number one performance barrier is for students based on my research? What would you think it is? It's not smoking. It's procrastination. There's a high cost of, there's a very high cost to inaction. Procrastination. And we all have to deal with those things all the time. Second thing is, hopefully, we have to have the right psychological and emotional attitude. So what does that mean? What kind of energy and attitude and joy can you bring to every single situation? I got to say something about my man Ryan here. See, Ryan, I remembered your name because of the way that you met me. I've never seen you before a day in my life, but you inspired me, son. You walked up to me, you put your hand out and you shook my hand, you introduced yourself and asked me who I was. Right away, we developed rapport. I'll never forget Ryan, and I've never seen, seen him before today. But that's what I mean by how do you show up every day? Do you bring the right energy and attitude? Do you bring the joy because you create your own joy? It just doesn't manifest itself. You do that. That's the power you have. Remember what I told you? It is your personal approach that creates the climate. Your daily mood that makes the weather. Why don't you show up like Ryan, show up like Ryan did tonight, tomorrow? Try this. Wherever you go for the whole day for 24 hours, just be that person. Be energy, attitude, and joy. Watch what happens in your life. You will attract what you put out there. Ryan, thank you. You inspired me tonight. I might want to be like Ryan. I don't need to be like Jackie Ivanko because I can't sing. I can't be Usain Bolt because I'm too old, but I can be like Ryan. I can be kind and nice and generous. He may have saved my life and didn't even know it by simply being kind to me tonight. You guys, you have power. It's that simple to change the world. Personal mastery. Personal mastery by definition is the ability to master your behaviors, your thoughts, and your actions. It goes back to the think, say, do principle. Mastering your behaviors, your thoughts, and your actions. Pretty simple stuff, lots of fun. You know, achieving competitive excellence really boils down to three things as far as I'm concerned. What you really want, what you absolutely believe, and what you're willing to prepare to do. I don't know what most people want. I only know what they say they want. So it's important that you know what you're saying and know what you're thinking and start thinking about this and create yourself a goal. Short story, this young man right here, his name is Trevor Brown. He's one of the athletes out of speed track and field. I've known him for a long time. The first time that I saw him, it was kind of like this Ryan thing that I just had. Ryan, I hope you don't mind me using your name in this, in this presentation. You might be on YouTube, be careful. I met Trevor in 2009 and he joined our speed track and field program. And the first time that I saw him come in, we trained at 5.30 in the morning, cold outside. And I said, you're gonna be a pro. He looked at me like I had lost my mind and he was very perplexed. You see, he hadn't won anything the years prior in track and field. And he was a pretty good football player. I said, you're gonna be a pro. Took a couple of minutes inside the facility and I walked him through a couple of processes and I told him to give this a try. High level coaching, right? All I, do, all I told him to do was switch his feet. Well, when I saw what he did, I told him, I said, Trevor, I think you're better than I thought you were. Long story short, his senior year, he wins every single race he's entered, 110 hurdles and 300 hurdles, breaks two state records. He goes on to become the Gatorade Athlete of the Year for Colorado in track and field. His scholarship to CSU and breaks every record they have. Fast forward to 2014, now he's in the NC2A Division I champ, by, by the way, a six-time All-American. NC2A... Um, Division one championships. He's the only athlete to qualify for both the 110s and the 400 hurdles. You don't have to know what those mean yet. Nonetheless, he has a bad race in the 400 hurdles. Trips and falls. Hits the last hurdle. Tough day. He gets picked up by the U23 team for USA. 
runs in the international competition and wins the gold medal there. And guess what happens after that? Within about two hours, he gets a phone call from Rinaldo Skeets Nehemiah. You guys won't know who that is. He's a former world, uh, world champion Olympian in the 110 hurdles. He tells Trevor on the phone, he says, I want you on my team. Skeets Nehemiah is now an agent. It's January 2015, and guess who's a pro now? This guy right here. What has somebody spoken to your life? What have, what have they told you? What have they told you that you could become? And when are you ready to start accepting your greatness? How about now, yes? Remember, I, I'm telling you, you are powerful, impactful, and purposeful. You guys are champions. You've got to see it. You've got to know it. Well, there are two culprits out there that want to tell you something different. These two will destroy your dreams, fear and doubt. The acronym for fear is false evidence that appears to be real. And I kind of created this one myself, doubt. It's disbelief that occasionally undermines, undermines and betrays the truth. Every day that you wake up, there's a good coach and a bad coach on your shoulder. There's a good voice and a bad voice. You have to determine which one you're going to feed and you're going to listen to. Champions know how to discern those things. You, you guys understand the spirit of discernment. Yes? Okay. The problem with fear is that when you place your thoughts on what you don't want, regardless of how negative it, negative it is or how you feel about it, you'll act upon it. And then you begin to manifest it. Teddy Roosevelt says, and I quote, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And here's his definition or clarifying statement of that. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror, which paralyzes needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. If you will work towards your personal mastery every single morning, and I'm going to give you one homework assignment tonight to do for the next couple of weeks or until I get a chance to see you again, I think you can conquer those things. I want you to remove fear, doubt, and any self-limiting belief that you may have. Because again, I'm sitting in front of you. I'm not in your head. I'm a physical person, and you're a champion. You got it? Yes? OK, I like you guys. So here's a million dollar question. What might victory look like in your life? Have you dared to dream? Have you considered what it may look like in your life? Victory. Maybe personally. It could be academically. It could be family oriented. It could be your college experience. It could be way down the road. Have you seen victory? It's time to start claiming victory. But first, you've got to take a look at it and see what it's going to look like. Sometimes for me, just peace of mind is victory because of all the challenges that we face as humans, all these distractions. Sometimes it's just peace of mind. Some of you guys, it might be financial. Who knows? But let me help you with this thing. I'm on your team now. I'm part of what you're going to experience for the next couple of years, I hope. And I want to be able to help you with this stuff. That's why I'm here tonight. And I'm thankful for Pastor Brad allowing me to be here. Are you guys thankful? Am I the kind of guy you want on your team? You think so? I'd like to hear that. So now, what could you accomplish if you weren't afraid? Who said that? Stand up and say that. You, man, I'm telling you, you're absolutely right. Limitless. A guy went 136,000 feet in the air and fell from a helium balloon without a vessel or a craft on. That's anything. <laughs> You got guys that are running upwards of 10.44 meters per second. I mean, really? Physically, it's impossible for him to do that based on his limbs and all this other stuff. They, at least they used to think that. And a 10-year-old goes onto a national stage and then she sings like a chorus of angels. You're right, my friend. Anything. I'd even say everything. What's stirring you up? Well... I want you to know I think it comes down to three things. And I said earlier, think, say, and do. As you think, you become. Now, if you haven't paid attention to anything else, and by the way, you guys have been a lovely audience. I wish you could, I wish you could be here where I'm at because I can see the light behind your eyes. Has anyone ever told you that? Some of you guys have a light so bright that I probably should have darker glasses on. I hope the UV rays aren't killing me right now. Some of you guys have something on you that's specifically designed to make you great, to manifest your greatness. And I want you to start looking at it and looking for it. 
because you have it. Your brain processes between 45 to 60,000 thoughts per day. 85% of those thoughts are repetitive. What are you thinking? Whether you get it or not, there's communication going on, right side, left side. Something's going on all the time. So if you were, you know, let, let me just throw out 5.0 GPA kind of kid. You might be processing 45,000 thoughts a day that are repetitive. Are you saying, I am powerful, impactful, and purposeful? Or are you defeated? What's the message that you're sharing with yourself? What's that self-talk like? Is it negative or positive? I want you to know this is a critical piece to understand. How many of you guys have a, an AM ritual or an AM outline? It's time to get one. It's time to get one. It's a very simple thing. How many of you can tell me the first three thoughts you had this morning? Thoughts, not what you said. How many of you can tell me the first three things that you communicated? Followed by the first three things you did. See, that's how you set your course for the day. That's your think, say, do principle. You have to pay attention. When I got up this morning, you know the first thing I said? I thought, today I get a chance to speak to Pastor, Pastor Brad's kids. I could barely sleep last night. I was so stirred up about this, guys, because I knew that you guys are amazing people. I could barely sleep last night. In fact, I asked Mrs. Lee. I woke up on every hour after 2.30, thinking, man, I get a chance to talk to these guys. I want to get a chance to tell them who they are. I know they're fantastic. Pastor Brad brags about them all the time. So I said, I, my first words were, I can't wait. See, purpose will do that to you, and passion will do that to you as well. Somebody woke up and said, it's cold outside. Not me. Nope. Not me. I get to hang with, with my homies tonight. Tonight's a big night, is what I was thinking. I can't wait. I never even thought I was going to meet a guy like Ryan, but guess what, Ryan? You kind of shook up my world. You're going to change the world, son. You are going to change this world. Some of you guys in this room are going to find the cure for chronic disease, cancer, diabetes, high cholesterol, mental illness. It's you. Face it. Get used to it. Accept it. That's who you are. You might as well know it. You're champions. That's what champions do. They give rise to the voice of others. Yes? Yes? Repeat after me. As I, as I think, I become. As I speak, I create. I'm going to get it done. All right. I'm going to start winding this thing up. These are, these are the big eight to me. If you guys want a copy of this PowerPoint, I'll be glad to give it to you. I see some of you guys are taking notes, and I'm so thankful for that. It's wonderful. First things first. The first piece that you have to understand is that you've got to have a quality relationship with Christ. In the absence of that, it's going to be very, very, very difficult to be successful, as far as I'm concerned, and be joyful. Number two, you need a clear conception of what you want. A vivid vision and a goal that is strongly imagined. Did you guys think that you'd be hearing a guy like me talking to you tonight? Who said, yep? <laughs> you know, it's a little bit of a different message, but it's a message that you need to hear at this point in your life. You guys are studs. You got to bring the heat every day. <laughs> you, need, you need a strong confidence that, that you can attain your goal. But first, you got to have the goal. A focused concentration on what it takes to reach that goal. You guys got pastors, parents, teachers, and coaches that can help you line this thing up. A stubborn consistency. When I say stubborn, I mean every time you turn around, you're saying, yes, I can. Yes, I can. You saw at the last part of that video, he says, never, ever, 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 ever give up. It means don't quit. You, go, you show up and you show out and you go home. That's how it works. An emotional commitment to the importance of what we're doing. You've got to tie the logic in with the emotion to make it happen. High performance coaches understand that logically, there's some things that you say that you can do and you can't do, but if you put emotion in there, it's like putting gas on a fire. Boom! Everything changes. I woke somebody up with that, didn't I? Character. 
a good character to guide you and keep you on the proper course. Guys, I won't even say anything else about this except don't be a character. Have character. Okay? <laughs> and then, of course, the capacity to enjoy the process along the way. What do I mean by that? Listen, guys, life is a journey. And I struggle with this part more than probably anyone because I'm one of these guys who wants to get things done. But you have to learn how to enjoy the journey. There are going to be some struggles. You saw the video of some greatness up there. You saw all the challenges some of these guys faced. Some were sick. Some got hit hard. Some were running towards success. Some were, you know, so many things. But you have to have the capacity to, in, to enjoy the journey. The Apostle Paul says that he became content in all things, having a little bit or having a lot. I like that Apostle Paul. I keep mentioning him, huh? He'd been on my team. All right. So my coaching points are pretty simple. You can influence what's happening in your life. It's up to you. I want you to give wings to your dreams. Give wings to them. Remember, the guy went 136,000 feet in the air. The 10-year-old is a multimillionaire. Usain Bolt. Let me share this with you. In the last Olympics, they changed the order of events because of that Usain Bolt. Typically, there's a race or a relay that's run at the end of the day, but not this one. The order of events were changed because of this guy's spectacularness. Imagine that. He shook up the cosmos with his, with his, his speed. Anyway, I want you to live life on purpose and live life with purpose. Etch your personal mission statement into your heart and wear it all the time. Here's mine. Tentative efforts leave the tentative outcomes. Therefore, give yourself fully to your endeavors. Decide to construct your character through excellent actions. Determine to pay the price of a worthy goal. The trials that you've encountered have introduced you to your strengths. Remain steadfast, and one day you'll build something that endures, something worthy of your potential. That comes from the great late Stoic philosopher Epictetus. That's my mantra. That's why I'm here with this passion. I've got to live that out every day. Finally, doubt is a gap between stimulus and response. Get away from the doubt. Don't hang out with doubters. They're losers. You hang out with people that are going to lift you up, keep you moving in the right direction. It's okay to say no. It's okay to say no. Now, I have about 15 minutes left for Q&A, or I can run a six-minute video that I really want you to see because it's going to blow your mind on what man can actually do. So can we do the six-minute video and then just open up for five minutes of Q&A? <laughs> Pastor Brad, is that okay? Q video. This is beyond Olympian. Focus, teamwork, harmony, balance.
Unbelievable. There's no fear or doubt involved in this performance. Belief. Trust. Unbelievable. Q video. So what you just saw was a clip from a Cirque du Soleil performance that's way old. They don't do the strong men and strong woman piece anymore. But I wanted the reason I wanted you to see that is because. I wanted you to see something that was less athletic, but absolutely magnificent. I wanted you to see how these guys have defied physics and gravity, at least by perception. Think about your life, if you're an engineer, or whatever you're supposed to be, a mathematician, whatever those terms are nowadays, and how you can support causes that are tremendous. That clip was so inspiring to me when I saw it like eight years ago. As a strength coach and health and fitness specialist and level three USA track and field coach, I made a decision to be the best in the business, or at least one of them. I thought, I've got to get better, man. If, this, if the human can do this, the human body, then I need to step my game up. That's what I mean by inspiring others. I was inspired by this clip. I was inspired by Ryan. I'm inspired by you. I couldn't wait to meet your smiling faces with the light behind your eyes today. Having said that, I'm going to bring this presentation to a close, and I want to give you a few minutes if you need some for a Q&A. My name is Charmus Lee, and I built champions.